Dr. John has been raiding the cubicles and cabinets. The cabinets. At the A.C. Moher Berry at the University of South Carolina. And you are bringing in things that we do not need to raid, raid any cubicles or cabinets to find because this flower is all over the roadsides right now and perfectly beautiful. This is a genus that's familiar to everyone in the state. And of course, uh, we're talking about goldenrods. Yeah, yeah. And there are a number, of just about, I would say, 30 or so species God. here in South Carolina. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, they're all a member of the... Um, genus Solidago. Solidago. So every single goldenrod belongs to that genus. And a lot of them are in full sun, but there's even one that, that's a swamp one, I think, that I've seen. There are yeah. some that uh, do fairly well in shade, yeah. and they all, they <clears throat> they have different habitat requirements as well. Well, let's start over here with this one, and um, tell us what we've got here. All right, uh, this one that you're holding is, uh, is, by the way, they're all native. They're all native North American species. Um, golden rods. This one is one that I really like. It grows just about all over the state, mostly in the mountains in Piedmont. It's one that has bluish green foliage. That's always pretty to see, isn't it? And yeah. I think it's got a common name like, I don't really know what the common name is, blue green golden rod. There you go. But there you go. That, um, and just to remind everybody, uh, they're being uh, members of the sunflower family. The flowers are really tiny and they're congested into what we call little heads. It'd be just like a very, very miniaturized sunflower oh, that you'd see mm -hmm. in your garden. And, um, and they are pollinated by insects. insects. So and so they are much maligned as being <gasps> hay fever <gasps> plants. But that's not true. Generally, that's not <laughs> true. They, a lot of times, will grow in places where there are hay fever sure. plants, especially ragweed. And Tony's got some ragweed. He'll show us later. We'll see that tonight. later. Okay. And here's another. This What's one this is one? a very oddball sort of goldenrod that we've got. It's uncommon in the southeast, and uh, it blooms in the spring. Well, that is strange, because most of them we think of as really harbingers of fall. And of course, you know, starting now is when early autumn is. Yeah. But this is one that blooms in, the, in uh, actually in, uh, starts in sometimes early May. Okay. So it's a little bit uh, strange. And in our state, this one is, is actually kind of rare, and you'd have to go to Chiral to see it Well, I, I like to go to Chiral, <laughs> but I don't know if I'm gonna drive up there to see Goldenrod. Not now, because you won't see it in bloom. Now this looks like one that I have in my own garden. It, I and think a lot of people do. This it's, is it's a, sold as one for gardeners to plant. Right, and this is a cultivated, uh, it's got a na it's a named variety mm -hmm. of Solidago rugosa, and I think that uh, Tony says this one is called fireworks, yeah, yeah. and uh, he actually brought some in. This is the live stuff, just to give you people. And an you idea. can see that it's um, the the flower head is a little more compact, so for people like me, it's nice to use in flower arrangements. Mm -hmm. um, one of my master gardeners, Ruth Ann Bigger, is back and helping Pat answer the phone with another master gardener, Sharon LaVanish, tonight. And Ruth Ann does a lot of dried flower arrangements. Oh, yeah. And she says this one doesn't hold its color as well, but yeah. for fresh arrangements, it's just unbeatable. Yeah. It's fireworks. Really a pretty Solidago plant. fireworks. So I'll, I guess I'll hold up this Alrighty. one because we're um, over And I'll let you side. aim it towards Tom yeah, so yeah. we'll get a good view. So this is, a, this is one of the larger species that we've got. And this one is, uh, it's it's so big, it's been named Solidago gigantea. Woo. So this is the gigantic goldenrod. This is fairly common, too. Is it? I and don't this remember. can get to be six or seven feet tall, just growing in clumps along roadside. You'll see that there are rhizomes associated with the bottom of the plant, so it is a really good perennial. Well, it also means it's going to stabilize the, the ditch banks where it is, isn't probably. it? Probably. Which is probably a nice, and, uh, another nice yeah. feature that they have. Yeah. Okay, good extensive root system. Oh yeah. Now this one here, Amanda, is one that we'll see at the coast. And this one is called Seaside Goldenrod. And I think I have this one and it gets about yay tall. And when it's been grow and when it's growing in cultivation, it really gets happy uh -huh. and it can like be it. even bigger than it is in, uh, in nature. nature. But what I like about this one is that it's so smooth and the leaves and stems are slick, almost like plastic. Woo. Well, now but, we don't want to say plastic. That doesn't sound very attractive <laughs> for a plant. So it's, but, um, it's a real pretty one, just brilliant yellow and sticking up over the marsh. Yeah. Really pretty oh, stuff. A joy to see. And then um, this last one that we have to speak about, 
is uh, also very common. This is especially common in the um, the um, Piedmont counties. I got this one in um, Chester County, but this one is Solidago altissima. And of course that epithet or scientific yes. name means the tallest goldenrod, ah. altissima. And this one is really a showstopper. If you see this take over a field um, after a forest has been cut or the, the margins uh -huh. of a woodland, yeah. just gorgeous. And to see this with bees and butterflies all over it. Oh, and uh, you know, this brings today. something, brings up something, Amanda, about these goldenrods that, and uh, you know, I'm not much of a gardener. I leave all of that gardening to you guys because y'all are so good at it. But I don't know why people aren't growing more of these things. You know, they do grow goldenrods in, uh, specifically in gardens in Europe, especially in England. Well, but, I think especially now as we're interested in having attracting more pollinators to our garden, um, these are plants that um, have minimal requirements for um, watering and fertilizer. Mm -hmm. um, so for a lower maintenance garden, you get a long season of bloom and you don't have to do anything. I mm -hmm. think it makes perfect sense. It does, and of course, um, we should be paying attention to growing native species as well just because they're natives and uh, we want to keep them around us as long as much as we can but there's no reason that they couldn't be tried in cultivation yeah, and a lot of and they sure are pretty I've spent many hours cutting fields of goldenrod to take to decorate for parties and things like that and people say well isn't this beautiful and then I say oh it's gonna give me hay fever <laughs> but then you can tell them no it's not yeah, yeah. <laughs> And no, it's not. Um, it will not give you hay fever because it's a heavy pollen that's moved around by insects. So we want to thank Dr. John for bringing these wonderful plants and sharing them with us.